Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a fantastic day. This is the day the Lord have made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. The God of the Bible is good, and he's worthy to be praised. Now, I have something for you, my friends. You know, it's that time of the week again. I'm coming to invite you to join me tonight for Bible study, but many times when I invite you to Bible study, we have a little Bible study uh, in the invitation. And that's because the word of the Lord is rich and God is constantly speaking and he loves you and he's thinking about you. And he has given me something to tell you uh, uh, today. Now, this will be a little different from what I'm going to talk about tonight. But check this out in Luke's gospel, chapter number five, verse five, verse one through verse six. A wonderful thing takes place. And my friends, God told me to tell you about it. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of the Lord. And the context of this is Jesus had been doing some great works. I mean, in chapter number four, it says that he came down to Capernaum, verse 31, uh, a city of Galilee and taught them on the Sabbath days, and they were astonished at his doctrine. I mean, he was preaching for his word uh, was with power. G Jesus here preaching with power and authority. Can you, I know you're catching that. The word, the word made flesh preaching the word. Oh, God, I would love to been there to hear Jesus preach. And, and look at this uh, chapter. I'm still in chapter four, verse uh, uh 33 says, and in the synagogues, there was a man which had a spirit of an uh, unclean, had an unclean uh, devil, spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice. And check out what the man said. <laughs> and Jesus had to shut him down. He says, let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art. Now, this is a demon talking. The demon had more sense than many people have today. The, de the devil said, thou art the Holy One of God. And Jesus has said, man, I ain't ready for that word to get out yet. Verse 35 says, and Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. The demons and the unclean spirits were not qualified to give the revelation, to reveal to the people who Jesus is. And I want you to know, my friends, uh, you got to be qualified to talk about this. And those of us who are carrying the word of the Lord, we've got to make sure that we're qualified. And, and, and listen, I'm on social media. Many others are. But when you find that you're listening to someone, some cussing, uh, immoral, wicked, perverted preacher, He's not qualified to tell you what God says. She's not qualified to tell you what God says. And you, if you're thinking, you'll turn and go the other way. Jesus rebuked the, the, that devil to come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And verse, verse 36 says, and they were all amazed and spake amongst themselves saying, what? Uh, is what a word is this? It's an exclamation point there in chapter number four, verse 39. What a word is this? Look at this. For with authority and, and power, he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out. And the fame of him went out in every place uh, uh, of the country round about. I mean, everybody was talking Jesus, 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 Jesus. Uh, you uh, some of us uh, are talking about uh, uh, Travis Kelsey and, uh, and, uh, and his girlfriend. But let me tell you something. The fame of Jesus went out and Jesus's fame didn't go out because he compromised. Jesus fame didn't go out because he walked away from God's truth. Jesus's fame went out because he's the Christ son of the living God with power and authority. And, and check this out. He was trying to keep it from going out because he only wanted, he only wanted qualified people to talk about who, uh, to, to reveal his identity. He goes in, in verse 38 and down, he goes into Simon's house. Simon's wife is sick. Jesus goes in there, verse 39, and he stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her and immediately she rose and, and ministered unto them. 
uh, Simon Peter's mother-in-law got healed. She had a fever. She was sick. She was down. When Jesus stood over her and rebuked that fever, she got up out of the, uh, the bed, get Brother Gary, and she grabbed her apron, put the apron on and went in the kitchen and went to cooking and fixed them a scrumptious meal. I loved it. I would have loved to have been there to enjoy that meal. And I'm sitting there eating a meal with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sickness with diverse disease brought them to him. And look at this. This is a, this will preach all day. And he laid his hands on, look at this, my friends, every one of them. Luke is very specific in the way he writes. On every one of them and healed them. Everybody there that night got healed. And uh, Luke tells us that it was in the evening when the sun was going down. Sounds like our church time, around about 7.30. Sun setting and Jesus went to moving and people got healed. And verse 41 of chapter number four, uh, four says, and devils of, of Luke's gospel, and devils also came out. Many crying, look at this, many crying out saying, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. And he rebuked them and suffered them not to speak for they knew that he was Christ. Demons recognize Jesus. What's wrong with you? Why is it that so many today don't see that Jesus is the Christ? He's the anointed one. He's the one with the power and the authority. They knew that the only one who could come and do what, what was being done to them and cast them out like that was God himself. And the Bible teaches, and when it was day, it's the next day, he departed and went to a desert place. But check this out. And the people sought after him and came unto him and, st and stayed him that he should not depart from them. They didn't want him to go anywhere. They wanted to own him. They wanted to keep him. They said, just stay here and preach to us and just love on us. That, that goes to show not everybody, not everybody rejects God's truth. Not everybody rejects it. And my friends, you are a living witness to this preacher that not everyone rejects the word of God. They said, Stay with us. And then Jesus said this. He gave a programmatic statement. He revealed that he has a schedule. He has a program. He has something that he has to do. He said in verse 43, I must preach the kingdom of God uh, to, uh, to other cities also. Therefore, I am sent. I can't just stay with you guys. I love you. Uh, but I got to go other places. Now, the good thing today, Brother Gary, is Jesus is everywhere. Jesus is everywhere. He's everywhere. The word of God's been preached everywhere. But at that time, in him dwelled the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He had not uh, uh, died on the cross yet. So, so he could only be in one place at one time. He said, listen, I got to go to other cities because they need this same thing truth. They need the word of God. They need to see my power. So he preached in the, in the synagogues of Galilee. He left there. He went to chapter five. He's by the, uh, the sea of Galilee and he, he, he sees two ships, two ships, but the fishermen were going out of them, washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's. Now, he had just been the night before at Simon's house. So now he enters into Simon's uh, ship. And I guess, Brother Gary, Simon couldn't charge. I mean, man, look, he just raised your mother-in-law up. Didn't charge, didn't charge you a dime to heal her. Y'all couldn't, you guys couldn't fix it. The fever wouldn't break. She's sick in her body. Jesus walks in, stands over her, tells that fever to get off of her. The fever does. So the least you can do, if Jesus wants to use your ship, is let him. And my friends, there's a lesson in this. Anything you have that you give to God, anything that you lend to God, Hey, lend him your hands, lend, lend him your sight, lend him your voice, lend him your, 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 your career, lend him your, your, your uh, goals, aspirations, whatever God wants, whatever he asks for, give it to him. Because anything you dedicate to the God of the Bible is blessed. I'm talking fast because I don't want to hold you too long because I want you to meet me tonight. But he gives the ship to Jesus, but he gives it to him and he says this. Once he lends it to Jesus, Jesus takes the ship pulls it back a little bit from the shore and uses the ship and makes it into a makeshift pulpit. And Jesus is preaching. The people are standing there uh, on the seaside, their feet uh, in the, in the beach sand. 
<laughs> Good God Almighty, Jesus is preaching the word and, and he's, he's using Peter's uh, ship. And, and after he uses it and, the, and he's finished preaching and he gives it back, after he finishes giving the word of God, he gives it back and it's just like God. It's just like God. It's just like God that whatever we give to him, he in turn gives blessings back to us. My friends, we will never, you will never, I will never be God giving. No matter how hard I try, we will never be able to say that we've done more for him than he's done for us. That we've given more to him than he's given to us. For he is the ultimate giver. He gave the ultimate gift. He gave his son. And his son gave his life so that you and I could have uh, eternal life. Glory be to God. So he looks back at Peter. Thank you, man, for letting me use your boat. Thank you for letting me use your ship. I know that it's never been used for this purpose before, but appreciate you just standing on the side. I noticed you didn't, you didn't bargain with me. You didn't charge me a dime for it. So therefore, he says to him, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a draught. He says, just go out a little further. Now it's daytime now. And he says, let down your net because there's a blessing with your name on it. <laughs> That's a blessing for you. For you allowing me to use your ship, I'm going to bless you. Now, I just healed your mother-in-law. I know your wife is happy. Now I'm going to bless you and the whole family is going to be happy. Everybody's going to be glad because you're going to come back with a bumper crop. And Peter said to the Lord, he answered him, and I thank God, Brother Gary, what he said. He was very respectful. He said, Master, we have toiled all night, which was the best time to catch the fish. We have toiled all night and we caught nothing. We went by every man-made rule and law. We did what expert fishermen would do. And we didn't catch a thing. And now you're saying... Launch out into the deep. Well, we've been out into the deep. And we were out into the deep all night. <laughs> and check this out. Check this out. He says this, and this is what God has for you today. He says, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. I don't understand it. I'm tired. We worked all night. You know, after, after, you know, you, you hear mom, my mother-in-law and uh, of the fever, uh, uh, you went to bed. <laughs> we went to work and we worked all night. But if you say, if you say, launch out into the deep at thy word, I'm going to do it. My friends, not everything God tells you makes sense to you. Not every scripture you read, you'll fully understand. Not every word of instruction that God gives you, you're going to agree with or it will make sense to you. But I say this, the key to being blessed is to obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Peter trusted, he obeyed, he went out, he let down, he went out, according to verse 6, and when they had uh, uh, this done, they enclose a great multitude of fish and their nets broke. Man, it's just like God. It's just like God. He'll bless you with so much, you know, that, that the blessing creates a problem. Malachi said, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. Well, now you got a new problem because he's blessed you more than you can receive. Well, what do you do when the Lord bless you with a blessing where there's not room enough to receive? I'm glad you asked. Peter, verse seven, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were uh, in the other ship, and that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships. <laughs> 
that they uh, so that they began to sink. And P and and when Peter saw it, he fell down uh, at Jesus's knees, saying, "Depart from me, for I am a sinful man." That is, he recognized who Jesus was, and Jesus told them, "From then on, I'm going to make you, verse ten, fishers of men. You're going to catch men." My friends, God has a blessing for you, with your name on it. All you got to do is obey him. This is a crazy world that we're living in. You're seeing things that you thought you would never see before. You're hearing things that you thought you would never hear before. We see just object wickedness. We see people who are in positions of power, who are doing things that it seems to me they're trying to destroy this entire country. And Christianity, biblical Christianity, is under attack as never before. But I want to say to you, as I fade out today, trust the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is right. Peter trusted it and he received blessings that were so great that he had to call others in to, to uh, partake in the bounty and the hall. And I prophesy to you that God is going to bless you the same way. So join me here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> I still get a kick out of that. Yes, Bible study. I'm excited about Bible study. We're not having a concert tonight. We're not bringing in guests from all, uh, from wonderful guests from elsewhere. We're not bringing in singers and, oh my, well, Grammy winners and uh, Dove Award winners and uh, famous folk. No, we're not, we're not doing it. No thrills, no frills. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No. We're going to study the Bible. <laughs> and God is going to bless us real good. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.